السلام عليكم آه اليوم في عنا الانترا اورال اكزامينيشن آه يعطي العافيه محمد اجا وهي ثاني ثالث مره بيجي عشان الديمو وي ويل ستارت وذ فيرميليون زون اوف ذا ابر ليب اند ذا لور ليب ذيس از ذا بارت ذات وي سي اكسترا اورالي وي لوك ات ذا فيرميليون اوكي فور اني فايندينغ ايذر ديفلوبمنتال اور باثولوجيكال Uh, we look at the vermilion border, which is the junction between the exposed part of the lip with the skin. Usually, it is sharply demarcated. In elderly people or those people who are having sun damage, you will see that this border is not well defined. You need to pay attention to the junction of the vermilion zone with the skin of the upper lip because usually, I mean, uh, commonly we see for dice granules at the junction of the upper vermilion zone with the skin or even the lower or corners of the mouth but it is more common on the upper uh, part okay. to examine the lower labial mucosa we need to gently evert the lower lip exposing the labial mucosal surface in this patient we see here a linear white a slightly exophytic lesion in this case it is most likely scar here it is okay it's most likely scarred from trauma of the upper central incisal edge so mild e gentle eversion you look for any developmental or variation of normal or lesions here you can see um, a granular appearance and feeling of the lower labial mucosa these are the minor salivary glands sometimes they get little enlarged because of the hot drinks or as reaction to um, thermal trauma or other types of trauma okay uh, so we evert the lower lip we go all the way down to see the sulcus but gently don't over evert the lower lip so that you don't traumatize the uh, labia lifrinum look all the way down to the sulcus to checking for any finding now the upper lip the same way you evert the upper lip gently Okay, looking at the mucosa, at the junction of the vermilion with the mucosa, looking all the way to the corners of the mouth, then you continue everting gently, not to tear the upper labial uh, frenum. You look all the way to the depth of the sulcus. Okay, in this patient, I see uh, gingival nodules. These whitish nodules on the attached gingiva in this patient they are called gingival nodules they can be collections of um, epithelial cells keratino keratinocytes um, that are not sloughed yet but i don't see collections of materia alba or other uh, or plaque or um, this whitish layer so here these are the Uh, gingival nodules in this patient. Read about it. Go and search about gingival nodules of the attached gingiva. Okay, so we looked all the way to the sulcus of the upper and the lower labial mucosa. Uh, we examined the corners of the mouth for uh, any developmental or lesions. I start by examining the corners of the mouth before I go to the buccal mucosa so that we don't cover it with the mirror and just ignore it while examining the buccal mucosa. Okay, now I look at the corners of the mouth, which is the junction of the upper lip and the lower lip, and I slightly evert. Here we see multiple pinpointed yellow dots. Okay, these are for dice granules, ectopic sebaceous glands. Okay, let me examine the other corner of the mouth. We, I don't see, here there are only few uh, for dice granules, pinpointed yellowish spots. I see also more of uh, yellowish granules at the uh, junction of the upper vermilion zone with the oral mucosa pinpointed one millimeter in diameter yellowish spots we will start with the buccal mucosa starting from the corner of the mouth we already examined the corner of the mouth now we will cover it with the mirror to retract i will retract the buccal mucosa and examine it from the corner of the mouth to the pterygomandibular raphi all the way to the pterygomandibular raphi involving the retromolar area and up
and up to see the uh, all the depth of the maxillary sulcus all the way posterior to the maxillary tuberosity i'll go all the way down to see the depth of the mandibular sulcus from anterior to posterior now what do we see on the buccal mucosa in this patient i see milky diffuse whitish appearance involving all of the buccal mucosa and the whitish appearance disappears upon stretching this is leukoedema i see here a small horizontal white line at the occlusal plane in this patient it came close to the posterior molars here this is linea alba linea alba is variable you can see it extending to different uh, extensions in different patients according to the occlusion okay from the normal anatomy that we check while examining the buccal sulcus is the stenson duct papilla in stenson duct papilla i see the orifice of the stenson duct usually it is of normal color like similar to the surrounding mucosa it's usually located opposite to the upper first molar okay what else do we see in this patient no more findings i will do the same for the other side after finishing the buccal mucosa we go up to the palate we will start examining the heart palate starting by the anterior part from the incisive papilla the rugi area and from the attached gingiva of the anterior teeth to the premolar and molar teeth the attached gingiva and then go all the way to the other side examining the attached gingiva of the other side in this patient uh, the uh, color is normal and there is no any variation of normal there is such as prominent maxillary raffi such as a torus palatinus we don't see these variations of normal the incisive papilla is of normal color and size it is not inflamed sometimes we see patients with inflamed incisive papilla due to trauma from food from eating uh, like uh, hard food like apple or uh, carrots so you will find their incisive papilla inflamed sometimes we find a burn these are some of the common lesions we see a burn from pizza on the hard palate or the soft palate now the anterior part of the palate appears uh, relatively pale uh, there are several reasons for this related to the histology of the submucosa if we go back the posterior part of the heart palate on both sides it is also looking pale because of the fatty tissue in the submucosa on the lateral aspect of the palate in the posterior part of the palate we see um, occasionally you can identify the orifices of minor salivary gland ducts in this patient they are not particularly prominent in some patients who drink a lot of hot drinks or smokes due to the thermal injury you will find the ducts of the minor salivary glands dilated and inflamed start with the soft palate asking the patient to say ah, ah. look at the vibrate again ah. Look at the vibrating line between the soft and hard palate. Look at the soft palate. You see fine granules. These are minor salivary glands covering the soft palate. The soft palate also has a lot of lymphoid tissue in the submucosa. In some patients, you can find some uh, nodular hyperplastic lymphoid tissue collections. They will be more prominent than these fine, uh, slightly granular minor salivary glands in this patient again please say ah look at the uvula it is bifid in this patient this is the mildest form of the cleft palate look at the inferior border of the uvula how it has cleaved in this patient i don't consider your examination complete of the soft palate and the oropharynx till you see the oropharyngeal wall that is the posterior border of the oral cavity look all the way posterior behind the uvula look for any lesions any uncommon finding unusual lesion like a nodule or enlargement or um, pathology look at both tonsils in this patient i consider his tonsils large larger than normal but according to the history that he had multiple recurrent tonsillitis while he was young so this may be reactive lymphoid hyperplasia 
look at the palatoglossal arches, palatopharyngeal arches, anterior and behind the tonsils. Okay, so revise the anatomy of the oropharynx. For examination of the tongue, we need to have gauze and mirror. If I don't see the gauze on your tray, then I, I will understand that you did not examine the tongue completely. Okay, Muhammad, stick your tongue out, please. I hold the tongue gently, wrap it with the gauze. I look at the dorsum of the tongue. The normal anatomy here, I see filiform papillae mixed with fungiform papillae. The filiform is whiter than the fungiform. Um, I take the tongue, examine all of the anterior two thirds of the dorsum of the tongue. Posteriorly, you will see a V-shaped line composed of circumvallate papillae. You don't have to enforce the patient and press the, uh, forcefully to see that line. Okay, you can examine only the anterior two thirds of the tongue. Now, I hold the tip of the tongue again and take the tongue gently to the other side and retract the buccal mucosa with the mirror. I see all the lateral border of the tongue from the tip to the foliate papilla. Now, here is the foliate papilla on the posterior lateral border of the tongue. It is a normal anatomy, it is not a lesion. Sometimes it is enlarged, more red than this, we can call it foliate papillitis. There are no lesions on the lateral border or the, or the let's say, the exposed ventral surface and the floor of the mouth. I will ask the patient now to kindly raise up your tongue to touch the palate. Okay, I will examine the inferior border of the tongue. I see these two renine veins. They are located just lateral to the lingual frenum. This is the lingual frenum. Okay, at the junction of the lingual frenum with the floor of the mouth, you will see these pap this papilla, lingual papilla, and it contains the orifice of Wharton's duct. Wharton's duct drains the saliva from submandibular salivary gland. While here, here you see a lateral fold, lateral lingual fold. This lateral lingual fold contains the ducts of the, the ducts openings of the sublingual salivary gland. On both sides of the lingual frenum and the renine vein, you will see plaica fimbriata. Uh, in this patient, it is not prominent, just a vertical fold of tissue that sometimes has tissue tags, moving or movable tissue tags. In this patient, they are not prominent. We have reached the maxilla and mandible alveolar process, processes for both upper and lower. Muhammad Sakir. Okay, I will look at the gingiva. I will examine the alveolar processes by inspection first. If I see any variation of normal buccal exostosis, uh, um, pariolus, sinus tract, anything abnormal. So I examine both upper and lower gingiva. I write down my notes. You can examine the gingiva while examining the labial mucosa with the labial sulcus with the gingiva or while examining the buccal mucosa with the buccal uh, upper and lower sulcuses. You can also write your notes. But now when I examine it all together, I have more comprehensive picture. And even I can check like uh, other findings of uh, tooth structure changes while looking at the gingiva upper and lower together with the teeth occluded um, or coming in contact with each other. After inspection, I will do the palpation. Iftah Muhammad, I will palpate the uh, alveolar bone or alveolar process by digitally without placing much pressure. Just palpate, I will ask the patient, fi alam? Yeah. I am paying attention to having elevations or swellings and also the patient should tell me if he is having pain. I don't find any abnormality or variation of normal. I cannot consider myself finishing the gingiva without examining the retromolar pad area, okay, on both sides, and the maxillary tuberosity using a mirror. Okay, Muhammad, take your mandible to the other side, please. Here is the maxillary tuberosity of the left side. 
هلا جيب المانديبل للجهه هاي ايوه لاترال بليسمنت اوف ذا مانديبل وسكر شوي هير از ذا ماكسيلاري تيوبيروسيتي اوف ذا رايت سايد ناو اف يو نيد تو دو ذا باي مانيوال examination of the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands we can do that by sliding uh, our fingers of one hand lingual to the uh, first and second mandibular molars and your fingers of the other hand uh, pressing from outside you can now have the submandibular salivary glands in between your fingers the same way i will do it for the other side i press i slide my finger along the lingual surface of the posterior teeth and the other hand from outside and i can feel the submandibular salivary gland in between my fingers here in this patient case it is soft homogeneous semi firm actually it is not very soft like fluid fill but it is homogeneous i don't feel any nodules i go more forward or more anteriorly Uh, and slide my fingers down to palpate the sublingual salivary gland. By pressing, I'm seeing the saliva actually leaking out from the, uh, on the lingual fold. Okay, by pressing, I see saliva, a lot of saliva is wetting the floor of the mouth. Now, this hand that I palpated the skin, I used to palpate the skin, I cannot put it back in the patient's mouth. When your gloves touch the skin of the patient, it's not uh, advised to use it back to the intraoral examination. You will take the bacteria from the skin to the intraoral. By this, we conclude the intraoral examination.